Lights, camera, panzers. Oh. Well, they tried. At least these are not Patton's Patton's fighting Rommel's Patton's in Patton. Welcome back tank enthusiasts and cinema aficionados. In the realm of filmmaking, authenticity is often the holy grail. From the dusty battlefields of world wars to the futuristic landscapes of science fiction, filmmakers have strived to capture the essence of combat operations with meticulous attention to detail. And what better way to do that than with the awe-inspiring 50-ton armored beast for the protagonist to fear, run away from, and ultimately defeat. But here's the twist, we're not talking about the authentic machines of war that once rumbled across battlefields. During filming, fortunate directors, or those with deep pockets, would sometimes have at their disposal the military arsenal of the country where the shoot was taking place. The use of tanks from any other source in movies is something of a rarity. This is doubly so true for the World War II era tanks of the defeated Axis powers. Typically, during and immediately after wars, these machines would find other, less glamorous roles. Majority of them were scrapped, as the financial strain post-war countries sought quick profits from outdated or incompatible weapon systems. Tanks that were handed over to the military would sometimes see brief service before being delegated to training schools and firing ranges to serve as targets. A fortunate few were preserved as stationary museum pieces, and even fewer of them are in running order to this day. Needless to say, despite a few notable exceptions, tanks for use in movies were always in short supply. And at times, even when an actual tank could be procured, there would be no guarantees that it would survive the shoot. Yup, that's a real Panzer IV being used for practical effects. Instead, today, we will be talking about the next best thing, tank mock-ups created exclusively for the world of cinema. In their quest for historical authenticity, certain filmmakers went above and beyond just painting their patents gray. Instead, armed with an artistic vision and whatever underlying kit they could procure, they embarked on the task of transforming various tracked vehicles into uncanny resemblances of their historical counterparts, achieving varying degrees of success. These adaptations generally fall into three rough categories. Quick viz mods, seeking to just break up and hide the familiar silhouette of a base vehicle. Complete conversions, a more thorough work often altering the base vehicles in a more permanent manner. And custom built vehicles made from scratch to specifically cater to the cinematic demands of their directors. After rewatching a couple of hundred old movies, we have put together an extensive list featuring some of the more interesting and lesser known tank mock-ups. In today's video, they will be arbitrarily rated on a scale of one to five and in no particular order. There were four criteria an entry had to meet to make it on the list. First, at least some effort had to be put into breaking up the silhouette. No paint jobs allowed. Next, the tank mock-up had to represent a historical vehicle. As cool as some of the sci-fi stuff might be, we are sticking to the known stuff so we have a baseline to compare it to. Third, the tank has to do something. We're not about to start rating on-screen props. Except for this Matilda, 4 out of 5. And this Type 2 Kami, cute. Lastly, only tanks allowed. I'm sorry, armored car fans. I'm sure all three of you will get a similar video one day. This list is long enough already, and it has almost killed me. No, not me the narrator, me the script writer, had to collect and sort this stuff. Help me, I'm being held hostage in a large building next to the Like the Germans, we'll begin with the Panzer I. Somewhat surprisingly, there aren't a lot of mock-ups for this tank. One possible explanation could be their diminutive size, making the conversion from other tracked vehicles more difficult, or perhaps they simply got overshadowed by more formidable tanks from the same era. The 2009 Russian movie Crossing features a number of what can best be described as prop Panzer Ones. These replicas appear to be constructed using modified ATP chassis, complete with dummy turrets and inexplicably cannons. Not the most elegant work, but I appreciate their inclusion in the film. Two out of five. One Panzer I makes a brief appearance in the Danish movie April 9th, but its on-screen time is so brief it's difficult to rate. From what little can be seen, it's very good. Might even be the real deal, who knows. 5 out of 5. This little fella was made on a 1943 T-16 universal carrier chassis by a certain Tom Ardor from Indiana. It's a good mock-up, unlike the movie it starred in. Two glaring discrepancies are the center-mounted turret and the two-centimeter main cannon, which Tom chose because he wanted to have a cannon mounted on his tank. Fair enough, can't blame him for that. 
but we can lower the rating, 4 out of 5. Another case of mismatched tank armament is this Panzer II Ausf F tank from the German action comedy Morning Suckers. While the hull, based on the Schutzen Panzerkutz, looks alright, the gun barrel is completely ahistorical, comically long, and wobbles all over the place. And on top of it, the tank runs over perfectly fine begonias, which is a real war crime by the way. Yeah, 2.5 out of 5. The Polish 1961 movie Birth Certificate, which tackles the heavy topic of children's lives during wartime, features these appropriately child-sized Panzer IIs. They turn on a dime and they shoot, but their portrayal still comes across as wonky and awkward. As such, they earn the modest rating of 2 out of 5. The Man with the Iron Heart veers too far in the opposite direction, featuring this chubby Panzer II as well as a Panzer I or something, but we never get a clear shot at either of them. Given the ambiguous portrayal, a middling rating of 3 out of 5 seems appropriate, if not generous. Returning briefly to the April 9th movie, the Panzer II Aus C mock-up steals the spotlight for a time and puts up a great show. The same prop can also be seen in the Japanese historical drama Persona non Grata. However, the best Panzer II mock-up, in my opinion, is the one featured in the Russian 2019 movie T-34, earning a perfect 5 out of 5 rating. Before we move on from Panzer IIs, let's not forget the support vehicles from the 1977 film A Bridge Too Far. When it comes to Panzer III's and Stugs, there are two schools of thought. The Eastern Wisdom would have you convert a BMP-1. They're all over the place in Russia and are abundantly featured in their media. For instance, this Panzer III Alsp J with spaced armor was showcased in The Young Guard and The Interpreter series. I'd rate it a 3.5 out of 5. In the 2010 movie, Fortress of War, you'll spot multiple Ausf H variants along with the rare Flampanzer 3, 3 out of 5. The movie The Dawns Here Are Quiet features a Panzer III Ausf J, which appears somewhat tall and bloated, 2.5 out of 5. Several of these props were later repurposed for the filming of T-34, alongside an additional, more detailed Panzer III Ausf J-1 replica, also based on a BMP-1. Looks great, 4.5 out of 5. Our final BMP Panzer is the one from the Russian Tanker series. Besides the running gear, it is a near perfect copy, well deserving of a 5 out of 5. The Western approach is to strip down a decommissioned FV-432, which, according to Harold Miller, makes for a great base for conversion. One notable example is a two-story Stug 3 Ausf G used in the TV series Band of Brothers, and also Mr. Bean's ho Holiday? 3.5 out of 5. There is also an unaligned approach to making Panzer III's. The Yugoslavian Unconquered City series from the 1980s showcased a Panzer III constructed on the chassis of an M60 armored personnel carrier. While the turret appears slightly out of proportion, but adequately detailed, there is clearly no saving the hull. 2 out of 5. You may have already seen Enemy at the Gates, but did you know that the Panzer III J1s from it make an appearance in several other films? Also, there is a Swiss Panzer 61 somewhere underneath that Viz mod. Despite the distracting running gear and hull length, she is a gem and a solid 4.5 out of 5. I have no idea how the Panzer III Ausf N in the movie Pianist was made. Its brief appearance nevertheless earns it a somewhat flimsy 4. The Russian movie The Last Frontier from 2020 showcases an impressive lineup of vehicles, including this Stug model. All I can think of it is, yep, that looks like a Stug. Top rating. Stug also makes an appearance in the Polish movie Unknown. The poster for this movie is a banger, but the Stug in question is just a barely modified Su-76, literally the Stug we have at home. I included it just so I can slap it with a zero. As a matter of fact, let's have a Blitzkrieg round, clearing out all of the backlog of the lazy attempts at presenting barely modified vehicles as German. 1. 0. 0. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 3, negative 7, negative 50, that's a Cromwell, that's a Chaffee, I don't even know what this is supposed to be, 0, and that is clearly a T26, negative 1 out of 5. <sighs> this thing doesn't resemble anything at all, but ironically enough, it looks like the Germans would have actually tried to make it, given the parts. 1 out of 5. Now we can get back to- WAIT! The Soviet 1961 movie At a Difficult Hour features what can best be described as Panzer III's built on the Su-76 chassis. 
These cube panzers are subpar, but compared to some of the examples we just saw, they might as well be rated a 5. Similar cube panzers appear in the 1949 Stalingrad series. Panzer threes from the Korean film My Way also look very square, to the extent that their outward shape more closely resembles the Panzer 38T. The only identifying feature as a Panzer III is the gun mantlet. 2 out of 5. Finally, let's round up this review with a masterpiece from Panzer Fabrique. Their Panzer III was built from scratch and looks almost indistinguishable from the real thing on a TV screen. To my knowledge, nobody has ever bothered to feature a Panzer 35T replica in a movie. Panzer 38Ts, however, have seen their fair share of screen time. In the aforementioned Russian movie, The Last Frontier, several such vehicles are featured, including a command variant. The Ugly Duckling, in particular, is comparatively easy to trace due to its weird proportions. It is probably the oldest of the bunch, and was previously featured in Don's Here Are Quiet and Lieutenant Suvorov. Finally, the movie Enemy Lines features these Panzer 38Ts based on the ATP tractors. 2.5 out of 5. When discussing tanks and saving Private Ryan, the spotlight undoubtedly falls on the converted T-3485 tanks. The two martyrs following them are often overshadowed. The first one is the Martyr Ausf M, likely a reproduction built on top of the Swedish license-built M41. It looks impressive, earning a solid 5 out of 5. The other one is the Martyr III Ausf H, converted from the Storm Artillery Van M43. Concluding today's list is the Martyr-like Panzerjäger, converted from the Sexton II, paired with the smallest gun they could possibly find. 1 out of 5. This is the same movie with Nazi centurions, so perhaps our expectations should not have been particularly high to begin with. Now, if you'd like us to continue with this series, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear which tank from the list was your favorite and how you would rate them. Additionally, if there's an obscure tank replica you'd like to see featured in a future list, feel free to share your suggestions. Just tell us which movie it's from first. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you want to support our work further, you should know where the links are by now. Until next time, keep us in your sights.